Welcome to the Swim Swam podcast. I'm your host, Coleman Hodges. Joining me today, we've got a very special guest. She is a swimming photographer extraordinaire. She's a creative savant. We're going to get into all sorts of good topics today. We've got Becca Wyant. Becca, how's it going? Good. How are you doing? I'm so excited to get to talk to you about all kinds of things. I Our audience doesn't even know what's about to hit them. We're going to talk <laughs> swimming. We're going to talk photography. We're going to talk booze. We're going to talk graphic design. It's it's all coming out. Um, I met you 2017, I'm pretty sure, at ASCA in mm-hmm. Washington, D.C. Uh, you were there with Finise at the time. You were photograph we you did a photo shoot with olivia smaliga yeah this little hotel pool we tried to make it seem cooler than it was (laughs) cool but um yeah yeah and uh and since then i've loved getting to see you on deck uh i've loved having you as as a friend in the swimming community because you offer a perspective that i i don't think anyone else i know does because you our fellow creative, but you also have deep swimming roots and, uh, and you, you, you see things other people don't, which is probably why you're a photographer. So first off, let's start with a little origin story. Tell me about how you got into, well, I guess swimming and the more creative fields as well. Um, so, well, it's like, photography and swimming right or just into swimming well okay. <laughs> I'll start from the beginning um so I mean I was, I was always a creative I think even when I was like five years old I was like I'm gonna be a star on stage and like all these things um I probably didn't get into photography till uh college but I did take some in high school um so I did a lot of theater and I used to borrow like my dad's like camera from Costco and I would do the photography of like our shows, like the cast, um, the cast pictures for, uh, for the posters around. And I'd always have like a camera with me to take pictures of my friends. Like everyone needs a photo now. Um, and then I started bringing it to like swim meets in, in high school. And I had a little camcorder and I'd just like, like the ones that had the little tapes in it and I would record and make like the end of the season video. But I never took any of it like seriously. I was very much on this like acting and playwriting like field. And um, I was swimming the whole time, like, you know, through high school and I was like, okay. I I mean, I've always been like, okay, I'm not like a stud by any means, but my senior year, I had a really good um, swim season. And I was like, oh, like maybe I should like give swimming a go in college. Like I was planning on maybe swimming, but mainly focusing on like the creative aspects of life. And uh, I ended up going to UOP. Uh, University of Pacific, which is nowhere near the Pacific, so it's a, just to let you guys know. Um, <laughs> and, but I was like, I was there to be a major that major. bubble. I know <laughs> it's it's great though. I mean, it's in Stockton, but it is a very beautiful campus and um, campus. Uh, and so I I went there with focus on theater, but I was going to swim. And then they're like, you can't you can't do theater and swimming. I was like, why? They're like, well, you can't ever audition because your rehearsal would always be during swimming so you have to quit swimming and then you know swimming's like you can't do theater like blah 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 like you'd have to do you have to quit one of them so I chose swimming and I was like I like to draw sometimes maybe I'll do graphic design and then that's how I kind of stepped into I think being more of a creative as like this whole graphic design world and realizing like how valuable that can be and how like you know every company needs a design team and all that um, and I still liked photography. I think, you know, when you were an art or design student, like you have to take other classes, you know, to whatever. And so I started doing photography and I'd bring my camera to swim meets at UOP. And it started off just like taking pictures and it was fun. And um, as a swimmer, I was like, I would just psych myself out. I was like such a mental case that like, I would just swim horribly because I just get so in my head right before. 
But when I started bringing the camera to swim meets, I would just like take a bunch of pictures and then like all this stuff and then go swim. And my coach was like, hey, do this because this distracts you from you know, whatever. And then so I pretty much got into swim photography because it was making me swim faster because I stopped thinking about swimming. And then the, you know, the um, sports department like saw that I was doing that. And I slowly kind of did more photography for UOP on the like aquatics front. So I was doing a little bit of water polo, but mainly swimming, which was mainly just bringing a camera to the meets I was at. Um, but yeah, so I was doing design, I was doing photography and um, somehow that just kind of all aligned with swimming and just realizing that, you know, sports also needs design elements and all that. So yeah, that's kind of how that happened. And I moved back home to Seattle after I graduated. I was like, photography is what I'm going to do. I was like going to do weddings though. I was like, weddings. Yeah. Like that's a money maker and like, you know, real feelings and love. And then I did like three <laughs> weddings and I was like, no, <laughs> no more weddings. They're the worst. Like they're, they're beautiful. But I was like this kind of business, like photography is like, I was like, no, I need to do something with swimming. And then uh, and I want to be back in California. And uh, Finise was looking for a graphic designer that had a background in swimming and some knowledge of photography. And I was like, oh, that's me. And then, you know, two weeks, three weeks later, I was working for Finise. So um, I was at Finise for like six years. And uh, I started as just like a designer. Like all I was doing was like design work for swimwear or and um like the artwork for publications, like the ads you saw, I was putting those together. But um, we didn't have a, you know, staff photographer or any in-house staff. We had like an underwater housing unit, but no one knew how to use it. And what really, I think, just, you know, evolved the whole photography thing for me was as I was designing the artwork for the ads, and I'd also design the catalog where I was in need of certain photos. And I like wanted a certain way. I had this vision of how I wanted to tell a story. And instead of trying to find all the stuff, I was like, I know how to do photography. Like all I need to do is learn how to take it underwater. And then like, I could do this myself. So a lot of what I did that company was like, I eventually just kind of made my own role of being this, like I was our photographer and you know, the print designer and then all these other things. But those were kind of like the tying design and photography to that element where it's like, I can design this ad and use the image that I'm, picturing and taking it um so it started with me just taking the camera on our lunch breaks to the pool nearby and be like who wants to swim with this product today and uh it evolved into something incredible and um I really just fell into it and like swim photography like kind of took off and it really I think helped you know the Finis brand like you know show a lot of like that that element that storytelling that brightness and standing by that as like being the creator of that just kind of took off from there. And now I kind of just do some photography, like total freelance and, you know, I'll work with different companies or I'll, um, you know, I've done a couple, a handful of swim meets, like a couple of pro series. I was at Worlds in Guangzhou last year. Um, but I would say I do a lot more like one off shoots than I do meet photography, but that's kind of like the evolution of little theater Becca to some photographer and then I still try to like loop in everything else that I do, but um, yeah, and I love it. I mean, photography, as many people would say, just like why we love images and everything. Like it's all about, you know, connection and like feeling that heart behind a photo and um, they're, they're powerful. They're moments in history um, and yeah, it just rings true, warms my heart and I love it and I love doing what I love, so. Yeah. The, I answer your question. <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> I mean, that's, it's such a, that's such a great story. I love hearing, I think everyone loves hearing, you know, A, you got to combine a lot, a lot of your different passions um, mm -hmm. all in one. And B, you kind of made your own, you, you did make your own position at Finis. You know, you got hired for one thing and then you're like, hey, I can be good at this. And you proved yourself in it. And then, you know, by- yeah by by you know however long down the road you were doing something completely different that had all these different things but it is kind of exactly what you wanted to be doing or it combined a lot of the things that you liked which is which is super cool just kind of getting to pave your own pathway so yeah. you said a few things i do want to touch on okay. the first of which 
Um, you know, you mentioned a few times telling stories with the photos and, you know, at first you didn't, you didn't have the assets or the photographs you needed to tell stories. And, you know, it's like, you're making a catalog or you're making ads. Like what, what do you mean by telling a story with a photo? Because it's not like, you know, writing a story. Um, right. what it, how, how do you make narrative through images? Gosh, expected that question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, if you think about, I think it kind of depends. I mean, with Phineas, you know, a lot of the, the work that I was doing, it was, you know, it was product based. So it's telling the story of that product. And um, a lot of, I think, story in general is hooked on feelings. So when I think about it, maybe in that terms, like if we're talking about a tech suit or a paddle or something like that, a lot of it is like, how do you feel in this? How do other people feel when that? And like trying to capture the story of that, that feeling in an image, or maybe, you know, it might be a mix of an image and a graphic element that, um, you know, like a tech suit, you know, the feeling of when you dive into the water, you know, we, we see it when you like watch the Olympics and you see the bubbles, you see like that torpedo, like capturing that kind of story of like the, like that fresh splash. Like I was like, that's what I want to get. I want to get that feeling and tell that story because people can relate to this moment. And so a lot of that is like, you know, and um, anytime I go to a photo shoot, let's say it's not about products, it's, you know, it's about an athlete. Like, who are they? Like, you could just show up like, all right, we're going to stretch. We're going to do this. We're going to do a little of that. Like, that's great. Like, those are always like sexy images. But um, when you really want to show who a person is, you know, like I, I, I approach every photo shoot, like, you know, it, it should be a good time. We should be there to have fun, to get to know each other and have conversation. And that's where I think some of my most like powerful photos that I've taken are ones that were taken when you can tell that they are just being exactly who they are. And we are telling them how they want to be perceived, not just being like, okay, we're going to be intense now. We're going to be intense now. It's like, okay. He's like, I'm not an intense person. It's like, okay, let's not be intense. <laughs> like, let's try like this kind of approach. And then eventually you do kind of fall into the intensity they might have behind the block. Um, once, you know, they get that first stage there. So um, yeah, I think a lot of telling story and, and images is, is really just figuring out like the kind of feelings we connect to um, and and starting there. And yeah, I don't know if that answers you, but I think feeling and story is what we connect most with. So that's what I aim to do. It's a great answer. That, it, that, was, that was perfect. And I know that's, that's kind of a big concept, but yeah. I mean, I think if, if someone is listening and they aren't necessarily super familiar with, you know, a creative field in general it's like telling a story with a picture it's just a picture but you know there's like you said there's a lot that goes behind it and you're trying you're not trying to just capture a subject you're trying to capture a feeling yeah um, and there's a lot that goes into like you know where things are placed or like environments probably one of the biggest things it's just like you know that environment like we relate to how we make decisions and things all is about our environment and where we are and like what we're surrounded by and that kind of space. So once you have the right space, you, I think are more open to jump into the right feelings to get what you want. So what is one of your favorite spaces or environments that you have done a shoot in? Oh, I don't know. Um, gosh, I don't know. I, I will say like, um, I, I did a shoot with uh, Olivia uh, Smaliga and we were, um, we were at like her pool and we were in the dive um, well behind it. There was like this big red brick wall and there's like, we had a night shoot. And um, I remember us looking over there. We're like, Whoa, take pictures over there. It'd be super awesome. And like, we just like fell into that space and we just were like feeling the vibe. Like, Oh my gosh, this is amazing. And, like just like this red contrast with you in the white suit. And we just like that, that was a really cool shoot like at that pool and um, just, it was just us. It was us two, like the entire pool. And um, it was just a really awesome space with like each corner with like something really cool and dramatic that we could just like really run wild with creativity. And then like, I come with a bunch of ideas, but she's like, but what if I do this? I'm like, yeah, do that. And um, that was, that was a really awesome space to shoot at. Um, uh. If we're talking about like, shoots, I mean like, Swim meets are, I think, different because, well, you're not really controlling anything. You're just following yeah. history and like yeah. hoping you get it. But um, yeah, so that was that was a really cool one for sure. That 
Uh, I I forgot the most important part of this entire podcast, which is if people want to follow you uh, <laughs> at Bex.Wyant, that's at B-E-X dot W-Y-A-N-T. Uh, you've, you've posted pictures of that shoot, right? Yes. I, re- I remember seeing <laughs> the, the red, the red brick wall with Olivia and it was like, whoa, that's pretty yeah. sweet. Yeah. Um, so go, go to Bex's Instagram, give her a follow, check out those cool pictures. Sorry. I'm, I'm so <clears throat> sounds like, sounds like that was, that was a cool shoot. Uh, so, so back to your creative path. Um, mm-hmm. When you were kind of, like you said, Finice, you were there for six years and, and your position changed a lot throughout that time. When you were kind of creating your own path, what do you feel like the keys to just um, letting yourself grow and giving yourself the time and space to to make those opportunities for yourself? Do you feel like there was a key to that? I mean, like, did you have to really force that or did you let it happen more organically? I mean... Again, you um, mentioned. Some, <laughs> you, you, sorry, you you know you'd mentioned. Oh, it started with just taking the camera out to lunch, or out mm-hmm. during lunch, um, buying the camera a meal, <laughs> and uh, you know it's like it started yeah. it started small. But what do you think? Kind of some of the keys to getting to where maybe somewhere you wanted to be were. Um, I mean, a lot of it was, I think just growth in general, it's, it's saying yes to a lot of things. And I mean that very different than like, just like being a yes man and just like agreeing to it. It, It's more of like, um, I've I've said this before, it's, it's more of like, there's this game in theater called like, yes. And, and so when someone like offers something, you say yes, and then you add to it. And so I kind of approach, I think a lot of these different projects that I knew, like, you know, Finise is a small team. So people wear a lot of different hats. And I was like, okay, if I like, okay, I take on photography as like, yes, I'm going to do this. And then like, and I'm going to make it this. So it's, and like, and I might fail and, and blah, blah, blah. So a lot of it is just like taking on the project and acknowledging that you're, you could fail and this could be awful. Um, But I think the best way that I've grown with that, not only just like taking things and trying and, and seeing where my strengths are, what I need to improve on was also, um, really asking for feedback. I think that being really honest with yourself, not just being like, yes, I'm going to do it and it fails and like trying to like hide it or not deliver something because you don't feel proud of it. Like being honest with what you're accomplishing and honest with the people that you're sharing it with and asking for them for feedback in return, even if it's bad, like just trying to have that kind of like open communication about what you're doing has really helped me, I think, grow a lot. Like I think about when I first start taking pictures in the water. And I was like, what do you think of this? And be like, this is cool. This is cool. I was like, okay, like, let's talk a little bit more. Let's take like a specific photo and let's talk about like, what about this cool? It's like, oh, this. And then you kind of decide, decide, um, dissect that a little bit more and seeing like, oh, actually this is a little off and this is a little off. And you're like, okay. So especially when you talk to people who maybe aren't in the creative field and they just like, it's good. Or like, I like it. Or like, I don't know why I don't like it or stuff like that. It's like, talking more about specifics. Um, And then from there, you just kind of like grow. So a lot of saying um, yes, and, and really like saying yes, and making it your own, and then growing from there, and then asking for feedback, and learning from that is probably the most because yeah, I started as a designer, I want to do photography, I eventually took on video as well. And that was like, oh, I don't know. Like you just push record, right? Um, (laughs) That's all I do. That's all you do. I've I've seen it. All I do. (laughs) Sometimes you put like a mic on the top and that's helpful for sound. And, um, but you know, like, and video was not my strength, but like, it's something that I knew like was a need that I could try to do and kind of grow there. And so it just kind of turned into everything else. So, Yeah. Yeah try new things, fail a lot, be honest with yourself that you failed. I mean, I, I'm like notorious for beating myself over everything, but like, you know, just still like, it's going to be okay in the end. So, yeah. So, so when you started taking swimming photos, uh, 
you know, if if someone w- says, "Oh, I want to take swim photos," like Becca, what you know, what are what are t- what are tips you would give them? Not to give away all your trade secrets, but you know, if someone's starting out, when you were starting out, what were the things that were really hard for you to learn, or were really big hurdles for you to kind of get over, or um, you know, what was that learning curve like? I guess it kind of depends maybe a little bit on the background of the person, but I think probably the best move, let's say you're, you're not that knowledgeable in swimming, but you just think it looks cool. Um, I was obviously, I think familiarity like in the sport is like the most important thing. It's like really understanding. Um, I mean, swimming's all about like, I mean, it's not all about, but a big part, I think when you come think about the, the photography aspect is like the rhythm and um, also the unique things that a lot of maybe athletes have that's different than, than others that, to really understand like who you're shooting and how they, you know, maybe how they turn, how they breathe, how they start their routine before they um, get up on the blocks, things like that. Um, just like getting to know the people is really important. Um, I think the, I mean, that's just like one aspect for really, like get to know the sport well, um, get to know like even just like how I think like swimwear fits people and like how like products are used or how people wear their caps, how they put their goggles on, like all those little bits are going to help you, you know, um, have the best shoot with that best person, or maybe it's a group of people. Um, even if it's like a, maybe a team and getting to the coach and like how he does the flow of practice or something like that. Um, for me, the biggest struggle, I think, just because I was more familiar with that than I was like underwater. Underwater, I think, was the biggest struggle and just like really get to know your gear is another thing. Actually, that's like important. Anyways, everyone should get to know their gear, know what you're shooting with. Like I have flooded my housing before. It was not good. It was at a photo shoot. And um, just like, you know, be aware of um, the, the material that you're using and what you're like able to do and play a lot with angles, see how a splash looks straight on, you know, underwater from far away from above and like see how water acts. Um, It likes to do its own thing. It's really cool. But um, I think that's another thing. And I'm trailing off to other stuff. But yeah, get to know people and the sport and don't break your gear. (laughs) <laughs> and follow your dreams. <laughs> uh, follow other people on Instagram that you like, and and pick their brains. And I don't know. Everyone has a different creative mind. That like, I don't know. Even if you try to be someone, you won't. You will be yourself. So through the through that process, was there? I mean, I'm sure there were a lot of helpful people. You know, were there brains you nitpicked that you recall being particularly helpful? Um. Not really. I mean, <laughs> nope. <laughs> no, Did it all on my own. <laughs> yeah. um, I, honestly, I never, I didn't really talk to many people, I would say, in the swimming world. Like, I feel like I talked to a lot of photographers, like in just um, mainly like in the people business. Um, yeah. But when I think about it, actually, I haven't talked to a lot of people in the swimming world. Um, I wouldn't say not till I started going to swim meets. And then I was like, Hey, other photographers because I was always like a one woman show I still kind of am but it was always kind of just me and no one else really knew so I was just like okay um so it wasn't until I think I I'm also just better in person I think when I like want to connect with people that um talking to other photographers just seeing how they work and that has been more but um I can't really think of anyone specific at this moment so I'm sorry I'm sorry if someone is listening you're like it was me um, <laughs> <laughs> I made you. I um, made you. <laughs> I think that's super interesting that you talked about getting familiar with people because I think for me that certainly helps what I do with someone like interviewing them, being able to talk with them, you know, the more I go to swim meets or practices and get to know the athletes I talk to you know, the more I have a read on how, you know, the questions I might ask them or their background and the context of of what I'm asking them. But it's interesting that even with just taking photos of someone is the, the content is, it makes such a difference of what you're able to capture and portray when you are comfortable 
yeah. and when they and when the subject is comfortable in the setting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I find that very interesting. Um, so, oh, 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 sorry. go ahead. I was just gonna say, like, it also, like, obviously, it helps in a like a one-on-one basis. But even yeah. if you know them and you're going to shoot them, like, at a at a swim meet or something like that, if you know kind of like the rhythm of what they're doing, like, everyone's shooting, you know, that same spot of them before they get on the blocks. And but if you know that they're gonna be the certain way and how they act, you can play with that knowledge that you have and and like go to different angles and, and catch more of that intimacy ra- rather than just like where all the photographers are, they step on the blocks like, yeah, but I know you can do this because I know them, go do your own thing and you're gonna get more of a unique, you know, view of something that everyone else is getting. But, yeah. Was there an event, a time, a place that went really well for you and it kind of, you know, gave you the sense of accomplishment of like, I feel really, you know, it's like, I'm doing this and I made this position by my, on my own. And, um, like it, it kind of gave you a sense of pride, a sense of, um, the, the word I want to use is escaping me, but you know, it, it, it kind of clicked for you that like, okay, this feels right. I, I, I deserve to be here. So maybe a sense of belonging in, in your particular position as a swim photographer. Oh gosh. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure there, like, I feel like that I, I remember that feeling. Um, and I don't know if it was like in the moment. Um, but I mean, I think, I don't know. I, I think I think about like every, when I first started doing photography, I was just kind of like, okay, I hope I just like can, you know, get through it. And then I'd say probably in the last like two years, um, especially when I was like heading to worlds, I remember like, um, I was doing all these like just one-off shoots, you know, I mainly just did like photo shoots and work with athletes rather than meet photography. And, and, um, I was worried about doing that. <laughs> and I, I remember going to the meet in the first like three days, I just felt like we're awful. I felt the world was against me. Um, and just, I've never really like, you know, been that high level of meet or around this many photographers and just feeling like, just like this little, like person in this like sea of photographers but I think when the like the fourth day hit and um you know I I really was understanding the flow of the meat at that point and I was like getting like you know the rhythm of just I think the swimmers and and where to be and how I wanted to shoot and I remember I think after that day like looking through the photos that I got from that morning session and finals and being like yeah okay these are cool. I was like, I felt like proud. I feel like it, it, it's a means eight day meet. And I was like, I was like yeah. really being myself after the first day, the second day, third day. I was like, Oh gosh. And then um, I was like, okay, like, I think I can really do this like on, on all fronts, you know, as someone who, like I said, was doing mainly like shoots and, and product stuff where you can control your environment. You can control how you could just reshoot it. If they, you know, you missed the dive. And this was like, really just like, these are the moments and this is like, I need to get this. And, and then I was like, I got this. And I know I got this in a different way than everyone else. And I remember that, that feeling like a really rewarding, like, all right, let's take these rest of these days of this long meet and um, make it special. So maybe then. That dude, I, what, one of the reason I enjoy you as a person so much is because I feel like I, I just see, I, I relate to your journey, your creative path, it is certainly in the swimming world. Like you were saying that, and I got flashbacks to 2016 Olympic trials um, because I had such a similar experience. That feeling of being at a really big, important meet and covering it as as someone in the media, and the first day you're yeah. just like, I mess everything up. This yeah. is awful. This is overwhelming. I did. I it's got like, it. Like, I did. I do it well. It's like, oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so then, yeah. Yeah. And then, and then find, you know, sticking with it, sticking with yourself mm-hmm. and slowly finding your rhythm. Like you said, find getting, getting the flow of the meat down and, uh, you know, kind of putting one foot in front of the other. I think it's kind of funny because the picture I remember seeing that you took from that meat, I think was from the first day uh of sun yang yeah that's uh, it was yeah (laughs) like and that was an amazing picture 
Matt, that uh, was I took that by accident. Like that <laughs> was like not a planned photo by any means. I was like fixing my gear because it was like the after they get the medals and stuff, they come down for their shot, and so everyone's using all their flashes. And I was like, ah, dang it, I didn't have my stuff, but I was taking one anyways, and I got like the ripple of the other flashes, and they just lined up perfectly, like right over his eyes with the flag in the back. I was like, oh. Okay. <laughs> it was totally like not what I was intending, but I mean, a lot of awesome photos you get by mistake and it's awesome, but you're right. That was like the first day. Now I think about it, but, but between <laughs> then and the fourth day, I'm telling you it was, it was rough. <laughs> um, <laughs> do you, I mean, I'm sure, I don't know if this is a silly question. I'm not a photographer, but you know, I'm, you take so many pictures. Do you have an image that stands out to you from that meet for you personally? Oh, from that meet. Um, I mean that one, I think definitely. Um, I think it's probably the first photo I took on the first day that I actually liked. Um, uh, I don't know. I feel like there probably is one not like if I was to really look back, but I mean, there, there are certain ones. I think a lot of my favorites were like those really intimate moments behind the blocks. I feel like I've talked a lot about like intimate moments behind the blocks, but I remember like, I mean, everyone's kind of gone like Caleb leaning over the, the block with um with the cow, like a uh, bandana. And um, I remember getting that and I was like, I was probably in a spot I wasn't supposed to be. I was like sneaking around the corner because you're only supposed to stay in this little like like bleachers like you're not supposed to leave bleachers. and <laughs> yeah. so like I was just like hiding in this like corner like really creeping up there and I was just, like I remember just I think any any kind of moment when I was like hiding there and getting people like having that that time to themselves before they like went and kicked ass I think was was pretty cool but um yeah I don't know if there's anything specific but gotcha I mean sure. that's you said you keep mentioning the intimate moment behind the blocks, but I mean, to me, the the coolest pictures are like the ones that are intimate. And, yeah. you know, it's like the behind the blocks is such a sacred time for a swimmer, right? It's like you're yeah. preparing for battle. Like you said, they're, they're getting ready to go kick ass. And I mean, yeah. it's, it's like, I mean, hopefully, yeah. <laughs> or just suck. <laughs> but yeah. Who knows? Um, <laughs> But yeah, I mean, especially if you're a swimmer, it's just, it's a very relatable moment. Like every, you know, dive and mm -hmm. like actual action photo, they're always really cool. Like, you know, water and the breathing, we're like, wow, that's dope. But like, I think some of the, the coolest stuff are, I mean, I don't know how many times I can talk about like connection and like relatable moments. I'll probably still bring it up more, but you know, that's kind of what does it for me. And that's what I, I want to capture things that people connect to that's the whole idea i, so. I mean ag again i i to i'm totally with you 100 mm -hmm. um again i th the coolest thing i shot at those uh, olympic trials in 2016 was like there wasn't an interview that i remember from that meet but the, i made a, a compilation of, of reactions right after like people would walk behind like down to the media and then they would go see their teammates and like everyone was crying no matter what happened. Like if they got set first, they were crying. They got second crying, third crying, seventh crying. <laughs> it's like, everyone was just like a mess, but you know, it's yeah. like, again, it was like that, that intimacy and that realness and emotion. It's like, that was, that's the cool stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So uh and i want to we talked about this you recently did a little shoot with uh a swimmer cat breed she swam at cal now she now she does like open water crazy swims and she's really good at them but you t did a shoot with her i think it like an apartment pool just tell me about that because the pictures from it looked awesome <laughs> It's really funny. I honestly wouldn't even call it a shoot. I, I, like, <laughs> I, I would just like, I mean, the, it was just the like the little pools, you know, you see it like apartments it's, it's outdoors and like, you know, all pools are pretty much closed to just like go and shoot at. And um, I wanted to test out some housing and I wanted to catch up with her and I was like, hey, want to go take pictures? We're in the pool for maybe like five minutes because it was absolutely freezing. <laughs> And she didn't have like, you know, a wetsuit or anything on. So, I mean, um, 
I was just kind of, I mean, I don't really, there's not much to say. I was like, all right, dip your head into the water and I'm going to look into your eyes through this camera. Um, but <laughs> it was really, I mean, a, a lot of times it's just, it's just two friends like hanging out and I just happen to have a camera and we both love water. And that's kind of what that was. And so she jumped in the pool and swam from one end to the other, maybe twice. And then we got out. And I took like five Very photos. <laughs> <laughs> and they were on Instagram. <laughs> and that's what you saw. Uh, um, thanks, Kat. <laughs> yeah. Um, again, at Bex.Wyant, B E X dot W Y A N T, to see all these cool pictures. I was, I was, I was like, every time you'd post one, I'd message you, I'd reply to it and be like, this is cool. This is, no, this is cool. Uh, <laughs> So as you, as you have evolved, as you have gone on this swim photography journey, I mean, what do you find yourself? I mean, maybe you just said it, it's, you know, there's two friends, <laughs> you have a camera and you both like water, but what if, what if, what do you enjoy about the process of not only shooting, but maybe even editing, um, and post-production? I mean, what do you enjoy about the whole process now that maybe you didn't you know, you didn't realize or, or didn't even know this was a part of it four or five years ago. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to think about like, I mean, I think my favorite part of the process is the actual like shoot part and, um, and actually like final deliverables. Um, and actually just, I think maybe sharing the images and seeing how they're received by, by the model specifically um, mm -hmm. models athletes whatever you want to whoever you are that I took a picture of you um mannequins <laughs> like I think that, yeah these mannequins I've definitely done a lot of mannequin shoots um <laughs> they're not as fun uh <laughs> <Makes sense. laughs> it's harder to get swimsuits on them but um yeah I think I think actually like um you know taking photos like showing them the images like right after taking them too I think it's always kind of fun to see the reaction of like what is happening in that moment. Um, I didn't do that one at the beginning. I was very like, no, like they're not edited and you shouldn't see them. But the way I shoot, like I, I try to shoot in a way where it's like as minimal editing as possible. Like, you know, I don't want, I don't know. I want it to reflect what's true to what actually happened unless we're really trying to go like dramatic movie poster. But for the most part, um, I try to like keep things fairly true. And I think that kind of, um, I think the sharing aspect is great. I mean, I, I edit very, very quickly. If I can, I'll try to turn a shoot around in like a couple of days. Um, so I don't like, I don't like wasting my time, not wasting my time. That's not what I mean. Spending too much time, just like I'll filter through the photos. I'll edit the ones I like, I'll send them out. And then if we need to go from there, we will. And if not, well then off to the world they go. So gotcha. yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I think lovely. <laughs> I just love it all so <laughs> I much. I just love it all so much. It's magical <laughs> every moment. Uh, all right, fair enough, fair enough. So let's let's get into your other. I don't want to call them hobbies because you do them professionally. <laughs> uh, your other interests, oh, fields sure. of interests. Okay. Uh. You have your second Instagram account, Bar de Bex. What's Good. what's the at for that one? It's at Bar de Bex. <laughs> B-A-R-D-E-B-E-X. Bar of me. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, um, tell me about Bar de Bex. Uh, so, um, so I used to bartend. Uh, I used to bartend after I graduated from from college I was like I moved back home I was like I guess I'll like become a bartender because it's cool <laughs> and like my dad bartended for for a really long time and it always seemed like a, a very fun way to like you know make drinks and meet people and um but yeah I, I worked at this like craft lounge I have no idea where they hired me I knew nothing I took like a like a Groupon like class of like pretty much making drinks at a club didn't know anything about alcohol um but what I learned there was um, about how to like, hey, if someone walks into the bar, you should be able to connect with these people and make, a, you know, some sort of drink that's like 
that hello and that welcome that like, you know, um, makes them feel at home. So bartending, I'm gonna talk about storytelling again, like working there, they're like, I want you to try everything in this bar. I want you to create, I want you to like, you know, have your customers try things. Like it's, we're all about, you know, connecting with people and telling stories because every single drink tells a story. And every time we go and drink, like it's, you know, it's influenced by people, environments, like taste, mood, blah, blah, blah. So I was like awoken by this whole like world of cocktails and what a cocktail can actually do and mean to someone. So got the job for me, moved back to California, stopped bartending. But I like really miss doing craft and being a photographer and knowing bartending, I was like, I'll just like start a blog. <laughs> and so it How long started have you been off bartending like, before Finis. Not long. I talk about it like I did it for years. I did it for like <laughs> six, seven months, maybe. Okay. Um, okay. okay. But uh, yeah, but I, I realized I couldn't bartend again with the kind of job that I had, but I built up my own bar at home. And then I started just like creating recipes, photographing them, and then I'd write a story about them. And so it started as a personal cocktail blog just for kicks. And then it slowly like became this whole like creative service platform for people in the like food and beverage industry. So now I like, I'll work with different companies like like spirit brands or mixer brands, bars, restaurants, wineries, breweries. And I'll do either a collaboration of like original recipes featuring their spirits, or maybe they just need photography. Maybe like, you know, the bar needs five cocktails photographed in their space. Um, so I've done a lot of that or just like consulting with um, people who are like, you know, making new bar gear and they want to like test out products and then them photographed. And then right now I'm doing cocktail education, like because of COVID and everyone wants to go to bars, but they can't. So they're like, I want to drink at home. Like, I don't know how to do this. So I've been teaching a lot of like cocktail classes during times of COVID and um, pretty much how to like build up your home bar, like proper technique for using your gear, what makes like how to get crafty, blah, blah, blah. And so, um, that's what Bard FX has kind of turned into. Like it's still my personal blog, but now I also like do educational components and um, like make gift guides and like do photo stuff with drinks. But I mean, cocktails are really interesting and it's, it's really, it tells you a lot about people and um, it's just a really fun, curious world. And yeah, so that's kind of what Bard FX, so that's my other account. <laughs> Swimming. account number two <laughs> yeah. account number we two. have a third one we have a third one <laughs> it's I, new <laughs> it's new i i want to just ask a couple questions about Barde bex i sure. mean it's just it's so cool again something i admire about you everything is is about stories it's it's everything's telling a story photography swimming cocktails they all tell story like I wouldn't think a cocktail tells a story. I don't like cocktails. And I'm like, what's the point? I don't... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but it's like talking to you, it's like, well, now I want to try five different cocktails and, you know, have, have Bex tell me about the intricacies of each one yeah. and then, and then have it, you know, drink it slowly and, and have it tell me a story. You know, it's, it's, um, it's, it's a really cool thing. I mean, what, have you bartended since? Uh, I know you've you've done events, I you and you did your own event. Tell me about the the personal event you did where you made custom cocktails for everyone. Oh my gosh, yeah, um, yeah. Well, that's kind of like a wrap of all the things I was like, okay, people. Well, okay, one like cocktails, yeah. Um, photography, duh, and then um, <laughs> <laughs> and like uh, duh. So uh, that was a project which is still kind of like going but it was called drink this moment and the idea was that essentially you know what we drink how we drink who we drink with blah 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 it's 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 all um it's all different and we all have different reasons for doing it we all connect in different ways with whatever's around us and our flavors and all that so i wanted to create like a cocktail book um i mainly just started like with friends and and family and i had them do like a little survey about just like who they are their general taste what they think about when they think of you know vodka whiskey tequila like what they like or don't like don't know they like um what they like to do in their free time like kind of getting to know them as a character and their taste buds and then we had a like one-on-one -on -one cocktail session where they came over and i played around with different ideas made little mini cocktails 
and we created like a recipe that connected to them. So I did this with like 27 people. And I'm then gonna on the say, day, this isn't like three people, right? This is like a no, lot was, of one-on-one. I was like, I'm going to do five people. And then I was like, or all of them. And so <laughs> I can't ever just do it small. I don't know why, but um, yeah. So I did a photo shoot like the day of the event, um, which like, I would do differently now, but uh, it was like an eight hour shoot and everyone showed up and they were like, they kind of like dress the attire of like where they would be drinking this drink. So like if you had more of, you know, maybe a warm and cozy, like winter cocktail, like you were probably dressed like that. And so everyone had a session. I would make the drink for them and then I would grab my camera and we go photograph them with their cocktail. And then like they named their own cocktail and all that. And so I did this with everyone. So everyone had a custom cocktail that kind of spoke to them. Um, and it's, it's not necessarily like a drink that like describes you. I think that's really dumb. Like all those like quizzes, they're fun to do, but it's like, what drink is me? It's like, I don't know. Like your drink, your drink flavor changes all the time. It's like when people ask my favorite cocktail is, I'm like, I don't know the one that's in my hand right now. And I like it. <laughs> because I know sometimes I don't like whiskey and sometimes I want this sometimes I don't want a cocktail I just want like a beer or um I don't know hot chocolate so uh it's more about like something that maybe brings a memory to them or a happy moment or comfort or something like that so that was kind of the idea of that shoot um which is kind of like what I try to do I think when I'm making an original recipe is like what is this connecting to what is that kind of idea but it was really fun, I think, doing it with, you know, friends and family and kind of getting to know them on a different level and then bringing them in a little bit into my boozy world and then taking pictures of them. And a lot of them have never really like done a shoot with me or get their picture taken like at all. So they're like, I don't know how to take pictures. So I was like, we can get there. And so I think that was a really fun um, way to just, you know, ease up and get comfortable and make some memories. So that's what that project was. That's but, uh, su- super cool. How do you, do you see, you said it's kind of ongoing. What do you see for the future of that? Or well, you- well, I never really fit. Like oh. I would not say it is done. Like I, I did, I did it. And then I kind of had to put it on pause. Cause just, I always seem to overbook my life a little bit with all these random projects. So it's just kind of something I keep kind of revisiting and maybe I do eventually still want to turn it into a book. Um, there shouldn't like, you know, things I want to reshoot or maybe like reapproach. So it will be done eventually is the hope. Everyone asked me about it. How's that cocktail book going? I was like, I'm aware that you didn't see it yet and it's not available. Just (laughs) Um, chill out. Okay. okay? (laughs) But I love bookmaking. I love writing and I love photography and drinks and people. So I was like, this will be done because these are all things I'm very passionate about. I just... I'm just not there yet, <laughs> but it was a really fun day. And like, you know, we, we made it an event. I mean, I was running around like a crazy person, but like there, we had like a bunch of food out and people had like games and stuff. So everyone just kind of hung out for the day and had their cocktail and decorated coasters and Instagrammed away. So <laughs> it was good. It was a fun day. Yeah. yeah. I'm genuinely sad. I didn't get to be a part of that. Well, you don't like cocktails though. <laughs> listen i'm open to, i am oh, saying, open saying to- i'm saying yes to things like you told me oh, to. okay yeah um so so you've done you also you know you've freelanced for cocktail magazines as well mm-hmm. right yeah tell me a little bit yeah. about that um i've kind of done a mix some i've just like done you know i've done a photos for their magazine um Mm -hmm. but there was one I mean the magazine doesn't exist anymore it kind of like went away but uh I was kind of a not kind of I was a cocktail photographer and writer for their like home bar section so I was doing like two recipes and an issue and they're usually themed if it was like you know a Halloween themed magazine but the whole magazine would be about booze and then I would kind of feature like a home cocktail usually featuring spirits like because it was a Bay Area magazine so I'd feature spirits from distilleries in the area and um yeah and just try to encompass the the season that we we're in and those kind of flavors so we had one that was just like rum so I obviously went kind of like a tiki themed for that and so I've done stuff like like that it, it's usually either photography or like a collaboration where I'm 
probably making up new recipes. Um, so I've done that and been like blog features on other brands if they have maybe I don't know, bar gear that they want to show it like in use with a cocktail, that kind of thing. So yeah, just a little, just a little bit of everywhere. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, again, you, you have this interest and you kind of create, combine it with other interests and then you're able to do a lot of really cool stuff with it, which is really cool. Uh, which brings us to Instagram number three. <laughs> Instagram number three, yes. Uh, at Bex and Crafts. Bex and Crafts, right. like arts and crafts with Bex and with Bex. Crafts. <laughs> yeah. It's new. It, like, it just appeared maybe, I don't know, like a month ago. And it has like four or five posts. But, um, well, so I have Bex Wyant, which is obviously like, it was for photography, but I wanted somewhere to showcase I think craft in my design and it just didn't really live in that hub. And then Barta Bex, they're like, no, booze only. I was like, fine, booze only. Um, and so <laughs> Bex and Crafts, I started like, I wanted to create an account that was for like the crafty side of me. Um, so I started making tiny pots that um, I, I did it once like at this conference like a year ago because they just like had a station where you can make tiny pots between workshops. And then I was like, that was fun. And then later I was like, you could probably get your own small pottery wheel. So my friend gave it to me for um, for uh, my birthday, and then I started making pots. And I have the wheel on here. So it's a little pottery wheel. It's this big. <laughs> I wish I cleaned it actually. It's this big. It's so and I make small. little pots that are like this big. <laughs> and, um, X and craft. If you like small things, I have more then you should definitely check out my little tiny pot. Oh my gosh. If you're listening on a podcast, you should go to the YouTube. You should go to the video. <laughs> go to minute, I don't know, 50 or whatever minute this is because uh, <laughs> these are worth seeing. These oh, pots are so tiny. They're housing yeah. tiny little plants. Yeah. I mean, they can, they can do it all. So yeah, a bunch of little pots. Yeah, I also it's like little the size of my thumb. I also make little, this is a little penguin that's not done with anything. Really. It's just a little ridiculous. But no, I was, when I was like seven years old at the KCAC pool, like um, in Washington, I was too young to swim, but my brother and sister were swimming. So I had like model magic clay and I'd make dogs and cats and pigs and horses. They're like this big. And I'd sell them in the hallway to like swim parents that walk by for like 50 cents. And like, I made like 25 bucks a day. Okay, this is <laughs> a big deal. And then, um, I mean, I've always loved small things and, and like clay. And then now it's revisited my life. And now I was like, oh my God, I'm also going to make pots and small figures and other things that people might not care about. But um, it's ridiculous how much joy this little task brings me. So <laughs> that's just, just added on to the things that I do now. <laughs> Um, yeah, I have a bear too, actually. I have a bear. He's holding oh, stickers right now. But that's a, that's sweet. <laughs> yeah, these will soon be available on my Etsy store. I will start selling little pots. Once wow, I Etsy. Uh, Etsy. What's your Etsy? Oh, uh, it's just Bex Wyant. Bex Wyant Etsy on Etsy. Slash. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think you can also access it from bexwyant.com. I have like too many websites and things. It's a little frustrating. But I, I feel like as a creative <laughs> bartending and swim photography don't combine the way I want them to. Where they can't Not with that live. attitude. <laughs> okay, I see what you did there. <laughs> I'll get there. Uh, I will make any bar gear that float in a pool or something and that'll be great. <laughs> And, then, and oh my god what if you served cocktails and like the you started s sculpting like mugs that it's like a bear but then you could put a cocktail in it instead of stickers you know what i'm saying yeah <laughs> <laughs> is that like against well, you for the ideas man <laughs> got a new one a bear. <laughs> but, uh, yeah somehow i mean I, I mean, none of this is like ceramic, so they're just like it's like air dry clay. So you actually like can't drink out of it. It's not safe. Okay. 
So that was actually a terrible idea. That was a terrible idea. <laughs> okay. I will not give any more ideas then. <laughs> On that note, <laughs> um, Becca, I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to sit down and talk with me about all these interests. Uh, yeah. any, any, any parting thoughts, any big themes <laughs> before we sign off? Oh, I don't know. Um, everyone just, you know, stay curious and connect with people and don't be afraid and say yes. And even if it's scary and um, create the life you imagine, just go for it. Do what you love and love what you do. That's what I live by. Yeah. The end. Goodbye. You're welcome. And I'm sorry. You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swam podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.